We're still revisiting the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, which is before uh, the upper and lower chambers of the National Assembly as well, as what we intend to see could happen when the bill eventually gets uh, to the president and if he would have sent that copy or not. Which of these versions will come up and take the day at the end of the day? Uh, we still have with us uh, Dr. Edwin uh, Jonathan, as well as uh, Barista Manu Bani, uh, talking, taking those perspectives, uh, bringing it to the fore this morning on the show. Barista Ubani, as the day stands, the constitution of the land empowers INEC to conduct uh, elections across the country, you know, announce results and take charge of all that has to do with election and electionary process in the country. Meanwhile, the National Assembly also has the right to make the laws on the land and ensure that they present them to the president who must assent to those bills before they become an act. Uh, in all of these things playing out at this moment, what are you seeing, Barista Ubani? Well, it is the, 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 the president that assents to any bill that is passed by the National Assembly. Uh, but if he fails to do that, uh, the National Assembly can veto it. Uh, I think uh, there is some number of days that the president is supposed to ascend. If he fails to, that power can be vetoed, and then they, they will now pass that bill by two thirds majority. And I mean, and the bill will be will be assented. It will be, will be deemed to have been assented. In other words, the president does not have the the all and all power uh, to withhold assent. If he does with, uh, withhold assent, the National Assembly can come together and by the third majority uh, assent to that bill that they have passed, which the president has refused to assent. So that is basically clear as to who assents. So is the president, but subject to the fact that he does it within the timeline that the constitution guarantees. If he fails to, the National Assembly now can uh, uh, can uh, override the, 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 the veto of the president, can override the veto and then assent to the bill and it becomes a law. That is that is the position. Now, what is playing out again is uh, pure politics. I hear that the new composition now that we deal with the harmonization, the harmonization process, you know, it's, they make sure that majority of members are able to see. You know, uh, that is what I heard. In other words, it's a clear signal that these guys do not want to do the right thing. They want to persist in their error. Since they have put the conversation out, out there, and they want everyone to feel that they will still want that conversation to be the reality, that that bill can never see the light of the day until INEC is subjected to another authority. That is the thing they are pushing. And they want to do it by fire and by force. That is our local language. You know? But the Nigerians are really up to the task. If you want differently, from every angle, from every angle, a lot of Nigerians are coming up with the idea that they want electronic transfer of their transmission of their results. Majority, if you if you go out there today to carry or conduct any uh, any any plebiscite or any uh, opinion poll of Nigerians or what they want with the issue of deployment of technology in the electoral process, they will tell you that they want electronic transmission of our results and 90 percent or ninety nine, if not ninety nine. So, but I don't want. I don't know why these guys want to persist in their errors. Having made, having put out that conversation, having put out that point of view, and discovered that Nigerians are clearly, you know, against it, they still want to persist in that error, and they are doing everything humanly possible. The new composition, I understand, is majority of the PC. They want to push that conversation out and say they will never allow it. I engage one senator. I engage one senator. I called him and said, "What? What are you guys up to, sir?" He now told me, "Mr. Ben, you know what?" INEC is in the in the mode now to ask for billions of naira, all in a bid to buy this electronic uh, machine. That is what INEC is pushing, and, and we know they are game. And that's why we are now, you know, trying to go against them. I said, did you put that conversation out? Did you tell Nigeria that why you are against INEC, you know, using technology to transmit results? Is because of the fact that they want to now send, you know, uh, outrageous bill to the house. And then they will now share the money for them, you know, to themselves because that is an argument. Did you push that conversation out? Did you talk about that there is no, uh, 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 what you call it, network in your village? And you are now telling us a different thing entirely you know, when I'm having a private discussion. So these guys know what they are doing. If you see how they sit down and plan how to, you know, you know, hot Nigeria. I understand that even when Gaia was presiding as a deputy, somebody who was a member, somebody who was a member of that committee gave me what played out. If Gaia wants to try and relate, he will call one of his friends you know, from the north. 
to take over the conversation and watch the conversation from the dog before it comes back. In other words, they, they all plan they, from the beginning, they plan that they must truncate this particular process by ensuring that INEC does not have the autonomy to determine how he's going to conduct the election. So, you know, these are the kind of things that happen in the house. We see all the kind of game that is being played and being manipulated in the house and all that, you know, all for, you know, some interest, you know, sometimes regional interest, sometimes personal interest. Nigeria does not come at all in their contemplation. They don't place Nigeria as a priority. Oh, let's get this thing done because of future uh, generation and for the sake of the country. It's all about themselves and all that. So I think it's about selfish interest. They want a situation where we continue with the old method of our electoral process, which allow human interference. And people carry ballot boxes, people manipulate the results. I participated in the election of 2015 in my village. It was a war situation. I saw God. God knows this. Somebody brought out a gun at the time. Well, because he has respect for me, that was why that gun was not used. When we finished counting and the result was announced, I were now going to the local government, you know, for collation. Come and see war. We had to follow because we use a boss to follow the, the INEC people because they said they can change the result even before they get to local government. It was it was a war situation. We were driving, you know, the driver that was I was saying that God, if I survive this one, I will go and give this money in church. So it's a war situation. Electoral process is war. Because, and I keep on saying it is the desperation of politicians that, you know, they heighten the entire thing. And because of what they will gain, they will put, make it a war, a war situation, all in a bit to win. So we must address all this. It's, a, it's, a, it's an ongoing conversation, but we must make it holistic. Deployment of technology, fine. But we must also address the issue of backs of office. These guys, when they get into office, what they get is so much that they will never allow free and fair election until Jesus comes. You know, so we need to tackle that issue, you know, holistically before we can get a fair election in Nigeria. All right. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mondi Ubani. Uh, let, let's get to um, uh, Dr. Edwin uh, Jonathan. Uh, Dr. Jonathan, every process, whether it's a constitutional process in this country or the um, uh, a consultative process, usually we have what they call the, the bonnet sort of uh, situation or stumbling block in a religious circles where you had a, th uh, a constitutional amendment to the in the 2006 uh, National Assembly, uh, around the third term, around the third term uh, for the president, uh, it was a constitutional conflict with Jonathan had uh, things around um, a devolution of powers, uh, no-go areas also too. Um, the, the Petroleum Industry um, Act, which was at least two bills that the National Assembly say, said that before the end of this year, uh, we should see the light. They should see the light of day, and they had the host community, you know, deal with it and, you know, put it in controversial circles. But this uh, Electoral Act Amendment bill, let's go over one around 50 clauses, and um, we sort of are now stuck with the electronic uh, transmission of results. Even if we weren't talking about this as a, as a topic, most likely will be the number one thing on the people's minds if we did a vox pop on their concerns about the Electoral Act uh, Amendment bill. W will you say that if you had an equation where you have the constant and the variables, if you took out the electronic transmission of results, you know, from it, you know, we play the devil's advocate, you, you took it out. Will it still be a, a strong document or do you consider it weak and ineffective? You know, thank you very much. Uh, if you take out electronic transmission of results, you are simply uh, telling Nigerians that it is business as usual, you know, because uh, NCC will never agree that there's network anywhere. Uh, the National Assembly will not be available to sit in plenary to give the consent to, to transmit the results. So we are going back to square one. You know, and that's what the traducers want, those who want Nigeria to fail. That's exactly what they want. So if you take out the, this vital issue, that's why the conversation is so high and, you know, uh, quite deepened, as it were. Because on the final analysis, it is the result uh, that is generated from the exercise that throws up the leader. So if we are not in charge of that particular process of letting ex, uh, you know people know exactly who won and how the person won uh, the, the, how the person how to win you know is is so critical to the system if we take it out the entire thing is uh, it's just very minor minor procedures that is why oh, oh, okay the card reader also is vital to identify the voter the card reader has not been perfect but it's been working 
and there are situations where it didn't work and they can still do manual uh, you know uh, uh, acknowledgement of uh, identification of the voter before he goes to vote same way we can also deploy this system and then see the success rate once you take take this out then you allow people to write results and bring and then also people complain sorry i was on my way to the coalition center something happened but uh, however this is the result and it could be at variance with the people's will so my answer pointedly is that this is fundamental if we agree as a nation to move forward in the electoral system and as we have pointed out the electoral system is critical to throwing up the right caliber of leaders who we think nigeria do nigeria dream nigeria and move this country forward the collectives you have now who you know with every sense of responsibility we still call them as leaders this collective are interested in what is coming in for them not how Nigeria can consistently move forward and join the committee of nations that have gotten their leadership right and delivering, quote and unquote, the right uh, dividend of democracy. So my answer is, without electronic transmission, my brother, although it's not going to solve every problem, you know, but it will be one problem solved and then we can face the other, you know, as we move as a nation. For me today on the show, Barista Obani, if we're talking about electronic transmission of results, but voters don't come out to vote, there won't be anything to count or transmit. So, in closing, how do we fight voter apathy while putting into consideration that this is something we have to check when uh, the, the, the act comes through or not? You have to do what we need to do uh, by generating confidence in the electoral process. Uh, Nigerians don't participate in our election, our electoral process, because they feel why, why do you waste your time? The result is already written. Uh, and most time, actually, the results are already written. So why go and waste your time? So they prefer to play football or do some other things you know, on the election day. They won't like to participate. But when you create a situation where the the fairness of the system is guaranteed. You see that people will participate. Uh, in America, you know, and other countries where we watch uh, them uh, conduct election, you see the preaching is that you must, your vote can make a difference. Your single vote can make a difference. So come out and you see people wherever they are, either, you know, the early voters, you know, we, you know, do that early or some you know last time it was through post a lot of people you know uh, participated by posting their results you know their, their 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 results you know to to the designated places you know on time you know it, it, it is the fairness of the system that guarantees confidence oh I, I i my vote can make a difference we didn't know that our vote can make much difference you know until 1993 remember when abiola was in throne and then 2015 when this burial of a man emerged, you know, it was there was this consensus among the people that we needed to change the, the, the government that was in power at that time. And you can see the result, you know. I can't guarantee that of 2019, but 2015, you could see the massive, massive confidence, you know, you see how people came out and their their electoral results counted. So I think that we cannot generate this confidence, you know, when we begin to do certain things in our electoral process that shows that it is fair. If it is fair, you don't need to preach to any person. Somebody will believe that when he casts his vote, his or her result, you know, will be counted. And if your result is counted and you see the result at the end of the day, why wouldn't you like to participate in the subsequent election? And when the power is restored to the people, that they have the right to give the mandate, I tell you this, those in governance should be very careful uh, because they know that the people are watching them. And if they don't perform, they know that the next election they're going to lose out because the people's vote will count. So, it's a whole lot we need to do uh, back here in, in Nigeria. We have a lot to do. But I think there must be a consensus among the leaders and the people that we must fix Nigeria. And the best way to fix Nigeria is to begin to do things other nations have done that have taken them to where they are. Nigeria started this journey with many other countries in the world. If you remember some of these Asian tigers, we started, they were, we're even better. We were far ahead of them. I went to Singapore and I couldn't believe that this was a third world that became a first world just as a result of leadership. Leadership, everything falls and rises with leadership. 
Right. And the moment we begin to enthrone the wrong people, there is no way Nigeria can, can meet up you know, with the standard of other nations. But because of leadership, leadership is key. We have Thank always you. been unfortunate with leadership. Right. And it comes as a result of the fact that our electoral process itself has not been fair Thank enough to much. throw up people that are that they want to go and do the, 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 the work that Nigerians right. want them to do. Look at somebody like Pat Tommy that probably you know, went back to a Delta state to participate in the electoral process. He was still dressing up when, when he learned that the, Th the, the thank primary you very election much. of his political party has, has already taken place. So we need All to right. do something about the electoral process and about leadership. Thank you very much. Incidentally, Professor Pat Tommy was here uh, earlier this week. Um, Monday Obani, former first vice president of the Nigeria Bar Association. It's a pleasure speaking with you this morning. Uh, and also Dr. Edwin Jonathan uh, from the River State University, a lecturer there. Thank you very much also, too, for speaking with us. This has been a rich, intense, and engaging discussion, and I hope the rest of the people who watched in uh, also, too, did find it engaging and informative. We hope we can get this sort of debate in National Assembly uh, on a regular basis, and we will be the best for it. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Amazing conversation today, and it's amazing also, let me put, use that again, when uh, INEC had sometimes said, uh, sometimes said, maybe there wasn't any portal, they didn't have any portal, but now we've graduated with, uh, from not having a portal uh -huh. to wanting to transmit our results electronically. Mm -hmm. I think we're moving forward. Moving forward, and uh, <laughs> take us away from the antediluvian caveman, cavewoman age, we want to the move forward. The and all of that. And how do they say on the streets, the young people, they say, we move. We move. <laughs> <laughs> That's the show. Thank you so much for being part of the program today. I am Shu Oyedeji. And I am Awogo Obo. It's when they say, Mwete, Mwete, Mwete. And the rest of the crew can tell you, yalla, 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 yalla.